Let's begin by talking about ingons and going over some ways that we can find and eliminate those from our models. So this is O2 begin in your project files. If you want to open up with uh, this file, uh, open up this file and follow along, you're certainly welcome to do that. Now we're going to be talking about kinds of polygon faces, so I want to be able to see clearly those edges. So the first thing that I want to do after loading this file up is to go into shading and let's turn on wireframe on shaded. So we'll go ahead and turn that on. That'll allow us to see all of the edges even when we don't have the model selected. We can see those edges a little bit more clearly and see what, what it is we're talking about. So when we talk about uh, polygon faces, and this is just, just a uh, kind of medium res polygon head made up of a, a bunch of different faces, and you'll notice that a lot of these faces have four sides, so there's kind of these squares all over the model. These are called quads. So four-sided polygons are going to be very common, especially in character modeling using polygons. And the reason for this is, or a couple of actually, a couple of reasons. So one of the reasons is that this subdivides and smooths very well. So if you're subdividing for sculpting or you're going to apply some sort of subdivision or smoothing at render time, it's going to smooth very predictably. So you have, let's say, a quad right in here or any one of these. If we go ahead and smooth that, you can see that the edges are all flowing in the same direction. So each quad has basically been subdivided into four additional quads. So you can see it's just kind of drawn lines across those. And that that subdivides very in a very predictable way. You can always tell kind of what's going to happen there. And it stays very clean. In addition, each point still only has four edges coming into it, even when we subdivide it. Okay, we don't start to get a lot of poles doing it that way. Okay, it also will deform well. So if we're using a polygon character, creating a polygon character, and we want to actually be able to move around the arms or, or you know, make facial expressions, uh, the quads are going to deform in a predictable way. So it, most of the time, we'll want to keep that uh, quads. Now, triangles are often used in games, and those are something that is, you know, it depends on your, your pipeline and your workflow. Most of the time, though, ingons are something that we want to get rid of. And instead of a triangle, which has three sides, or a quad, which has four sides, an ingon has a variable number of sides. So the n in ngon stands for basically any number over 4. So 5, 6, 7, 20, 60 sides uh, is going to be referred to as an ngon. We typically want to get rid of those if those exist on our model. And they can exist for several reasons. To actually view those, once we've got our edges visible, we can just you know take a, a look across our model and oftentimes they'll become apparent. You can see up here we have a couple of ingons that are sort of quad shaped, but we have a couple of lines coming up into those, creating the six sided ingon here. We also have one on the cheek that we can see. We also have a couple of five sided ingons down here along the neck. Now, we've seen those, but we might well not want to just rely on a visual inspection to see if we have ingons. So, there's also another way that we can actually uh, select those. So, let's select our, me our uh, mesh, go to mesh our polygons menu set, go to cleanup. Now we just want to select polygons, we don't want to do anything else. So under operation we'll go select matching polygons and let's choose faces with more than four sides. It's just a long way of saying ingons. So we'll go ahead and click that and choose cleanup. That'll select the polygons that we just talked about, so the ones that we already saw. So let's assume that we have fixed those. So those are going to be deselected. Now this tells us there's actually maybe one more and by looking at the uh, manipulator here, you can see kind of where it is. You can also hit F to kind of frame up on that. And we can see that that's actually inside the ear. So make sure once you've got all the ones that you think you have fixed, that you do a last minute check just to make sure that they're all done. So to fix those up, we'll go ahead and take a look at some of the methods. So for the polygons up here on the head, uh, let's talk about the reason this happens. So when we're working with uh, faces, you're going to have a lot of resolution that you're going to need for your character's face to be able to get the expressions you want, to be able to find the facial features, and to get enough just resolution in there to be able to deform properly. And that resolution has to have somewhere to go. So oftentimes you'll it'll kind of flow naturally up into the head. Now the head of the character is not going to deform at all most of the times. Uh, most of the time it's just going to be sort of the static skull shape. So we don't need a lot of resolution in there. And in fact having too much resolution, especially if it's going to be smooth, can cause issues. So we can start to reroute this resolution to eliminate those ingons. Alright, so if, if you wanted to, you could continue it along, but we're trying to avoid that extra resolution, so let's turn it. So to do that, we need a way of manually adding edge loops, or uh, edges rather. 
So to do that, let's go to Shift with the object selected. Shift, right click, we'll go to Split. And there's two options here. I actually like to use the uh, original Split Polygon tool. So we'll go ahead and select that. And now we can drag over on an edge and it'll stop at the point that we want to draw that edge from. So let's say I want to draw a new edge from this point and I want to turn this loop, I want to turn it this way in this case. So I'm going to go ahead and draw up to this corner and hit enter to complete that. So now it's created this sort of triangle shape, oftentimes be referred to as kind of a kite shape. I can move this point down, but what's really happened is that this loop of faces has been turned to go to the right across the head. This center loop has now become this original loop of a ring of face, a ring of edges, or loop of faces across the the head, and then this one is actually turning over to the left. So let's do the same thing over here on this side. Okay, and you'll see this one's turning to the outside or to the left. This one's turning to the outside, or in this case, the right. And then both of these outside loops are turning in on each other, so creating a closed loop. Okay, so that's one way to go about uh, fixing something like that. Now on the cheek, you can see we have three different edges coming into this sort of triangle shape. And this is a good chance to talk about the hints. So if you come across an issue where you don't exactly know what to do, you're, you're kind of stuck, we do have hints available that we talked about in our introduction. And here they exist as layers. So if you get stuck and you need to kind of see where those end guns are, you can turn on the hint A layer, which is a simple location of the, the polygons. You can also, if you really need to, turn on hint B to see a solution of some of those. So in this case, we look at the cheek, you can see, oh, you know, I can see that sort of connected across here and then connected at the base. So we can try to, to duplicate that. So coming over here, we can use our split polygon tool to draw this triangle across and then repeat that up to the base. And we can move it down, we get a nice result. Okay. Now there's also alternatives. So maybe you want to try a few different things. So on this cheek, you know, you may think, yeah, I'm actually going to just draw this across here, that gives us a couple of quads. But maybe the deformation uh, isn't quite right going in that direction. Now this may be okay because of the, the cheekbone coming down uh, and, and uh, forming that, but you just have to think about, because the, the cheeks are going to be deforming, that's a good time to think about the best sort of uh, layout for your new topology that you're creating as you go in and eliminate these ingons. Now the, also the ingon on the neck there's a couple of ways to do that as well. Let's look at one of those. So we could use the split polygon tool. And we can actually come in from this point and go down, hit this point, and then start going back up to the other one. So use the symmetry to our advantage. So here we've tessellated that into two quads. And then we have quads down here. We do have a couple of triangles here. So it is uh, okay to go ahead and select that edge. And let's just delete it. Okay. And we can kind of move this up and in. So now we've eliminated those triangles, made it into one quad, and that gives us four quads going across here. If we take a look at our hint, you can see it solves it in a slightly different way. So we actually take the point right here and just take that edge to the left and to the right all the way around and make a new loop that kind of hits that, that point. Again, we make a, a, a pole here which has uh, a bunch of different edges coming into that pole. And so that's something we'll talk about in another lesson, but something you, you most of the time want to avoid uh, six uh, lines coming into a point. You can't avoid poles altogether, but you want to try to keep it to a minimum of five or a maximum of five rather uh, points coming in. You can see here is a pole right here. So definitely on polygon faces, they're going to be unavoidable. So let's go ahead now and, and recheck our initial model. I'm going to turn the hints off. And let's do another check. So we'll go into Mesh, Clean Up, and you can see, oh, we've got that one less. So you can frame up on that. And maybe this one was just a product of accidentally deleting an edge when we're deleting some other edges. Who knows? Uh, these things come up. So we'll go ahead and use our Split Polygon tool. And all we have to do is draw that across. Even if we didn't have that point there, since this is an open border edge inside the ear, very easy to just complete that all the way out to the logical conclusion there. All right, let's go ahead and delete our history. And let's check it one more time just to make sure. So we've got our object selected. We'll go to clean up. We hit clean up. If it deselects your model, you know you're good to go. So that's a look at how we can find our end gons, reasons for eliminating those, and then also tools we can use and methods 
for uh, eliminating those ingons, turning those into quads. So in the next lesson, we'll take a look at a new asset that you can use and instructions for going through your exercise in eliminating ingons.